Hi, welcome to the podcast on microscopic bone structure. So let me orient you to what you're looking at right now. So the image on your left is kind of a a really thin scan of a long bone. Um, we see the end of the bone right up here, and um, we can see the, the middle part or the shaft of the bone going down this way, our growth plate in the middle here. And you can see there's different types of bone. There's this bluer one with that's obviously treated with the dye to make it contrast, and there's a pink, um, pinker part. So we're going to delve into that, and eventually we're going to zoom into what this blue color here looks like when we really zoom in uh, and look at the actual cells because bones are living, breathing, made of living, breathing cells and they need oxygen and nutrients just like any other cell in your body. Now as we delve deeper and deeper into the microscopic world of bones, I want you to keep one thing in mind. When we are all the way zoomed in, I want you to keep in mind a tree trunk. And that's how bone is organized. So if you look at this tree trunk here, we have, you know, the rings of growth. All of these are going to be like those tree trunks. This is bone, um, microscopic bone, if you will. And I could circle all of them. So if you keep in mind that tree trunk analogy, um, when we start to talk about those um, systems within bone, um, they're called osteons. I think it'll help make more sense. So let's start big picture and then keep zooming in. So first off, what are we looking at when we look at long bones? Well, we can divide long bones into regions and I'm gonna do that just now. So the middle or the shaft is called the diaphysis of bones and either end um, is called the epiphysis. In plural, it would be the epiphyses. And there's something much more to know than that, the, the middle and the ends. It just helps you give a frame of reference when you're describing certain things. On the ends of each epiphysis, you can see this white stuff here, and there's some over on this epiphysis as well. That's just articular cartilage. And the job of that cartilage is to simply provide lubrication, to provide cushion, so that bones aren't rubbing against each other at that joint. And uh, then we see, I'm going to delve into, if we cut the bone longitudinally in half, you're going to see a porous type of bone um, on the ends, and that's called spongy bone. And that simply is bone with living cells, except the only difference is those cells aren't so tightly packed. They're, there are gaps, it's porous, like a sponge. And that simply helps to reduce the weight of bones. The cells that make up the rest of bone, and it's there's not much of an outline on this picture, but you can see all the way around here and here, and it keeps going all the way around the perimeter of the bone. That, and you can see it better on the cross section, is compact bone. And that, just like spongy bone, has living, breathing cells, but they're packed in, as the name suggests, very tightly. And that's going to provide the hard, rigid structure for bones. And so if our bones were all compact bone, they'd be way too heavy. And what we're going to do is that tree analogy is what we're going to look at when we study compact bone and how it's organized. But let's label a few other things before we move on. The middle in the diaphysis here of long bones is actually hollowed out. And that middle hollowed out portion is called the medullary cavity. And its job is simply to house the marrow, the yellow bone marrow. Within the medullary cavity, because bones are living, breathing little machines, they need uh, blood vessels to supply them with critical nutrients. So there's a red one here and a blue one. I'm going to differentiate between those two. The red is an artery and the blue is a vein. And what you may want to note, the difference between the two, arteries are going to bring good 
good things to those bone cells, things like nutrients and oxygen. On the other hand, veins, they're going to take away the waste that the bone cells produce. They're going to take away the CO2 those cells produce, as well as urea those cells produce. Okay, so that's how long bones are organized. And what we're going to do is zoom in now on specifically compact bones. So let me orient you to this. So that compact bone, if we took a little chunk out of there, um, this is what it would look like, the square in the upper left. And here's my tree analogy. Here's, some tr here's a tree ring, here's a tree ring, and they're smushed in. Here's a tree ring, and we're going to pull one of those tree rings out and zoom in even further. And one of those tree rings collectively is called an osteon. And that's how compact bone is organized, in concentric circles of osteons, packed tightly together. And if we look at an actual picture of an osteon, this is what it would look like under a, a microscope. Roughly, that would be the boundary of an osteon. And, you know, there's a neighboring osteon here. And there, you can see them all over compact bone. They're smushed together. Now, before we actually zoom into what's all in the osteon, I want you to keep in mind the tree analogy, but also I want you to think about um, osteons are kind of like little neighborhoods in compact bone. So pick your favorite subdivision. That would be your osteon. Now, if we zoom into that osteon even further, that neighborhood even further, we're going to find some key things. And the major thing that we're going to find are the osteocytes. Those are the bone cells. And their job is to simply make sure the bone matrix filling of bone um, is the right composition. There's the right amount of calcium and phosphorus and little elastic collagen fibers, etc. So in this drawing, this osteon is, is right here in this yellow. Um, the osteocytes in the actual picture would be these darkened areas. Osteocytes. Osteocyte, osteocyte. So there's lots of osteocytes in one osteon, in one neighborhood. So you could look at this as an osteocyte being a house in a subdivision. In the middle of that subdivision, in the middle of that osteon, is a, is a uh, opening. You can see it up here as well. That opening houses the arteries, the veins, and the nerves. That opening, and I'm going to label it on the actual drawing is called the Herversion Canal. And that's all it is. It's, an, it's a carved out opening in the middle of the neighborhood where you can kind of pick up good stuff. You can drop off waste. It's basically like a little convenience store within your subdivision, within the osteo. And just like we talked about on the previous slide, um, there's blood vessels that supply um, oxygen, or oxygen and nutrients, so that's the artery. The veins take away waste, and then you have nerve, so that the, you can have feeling in those um, areas of your body. And the last thing that's really critical to the success of those osteocytes and that they get the nutrients they need are these little squiggly lines in these osteons. And you can see them even in the a little sketch as well. Those lines have a critical job. I'm going to label them here. They have a great name too. They are called canaliculi. Little canals. So if you're an osteocyte in the periphery of the osteon, in the far out realms of the subdivision, so to speak, you're going to have a hard time getting nutrients from the Haversian Canal and dropping off waste because you can't get it there through bone. And so what these canaliculi are, are tiny little carved out canals that can just deliver the goods straight to your doorstep, straight to the osteocytes and drop off waste. So it's a little canal to provide a, a little thoroughfare, if you will, of, of nutrients and waste to and from that middle canal. And that's in every single osteon. It's in this osteon, it's in this guy, in this guy, in this guy, you name it. And that's how compact bone is organized. 
So again, if we look at it from a whole perspective, we have the neighborhood, the Osteon, with lots of osteo sites, the main central haversian canal in the middle with arteries, veins, and nerves, and then the canaliculi help to bridge the gap between those osteo sites and the haversian canal. So the final big picture, we looked at the entire bone here with the epiphyses and the diaphysis in the middle and the, the bone marrow and the medullary cavity. And if we zoom in, we can start to make sense of here's our spongy bone right here. And this is our osteons of compact bone. Then we can zoom in further, which we did to look at a particular osteon with its osteocytes. And that's how compact bone is organized.